Hey, welcome back to Engineer's Workshop. I think we're on part four of the series where I adapt a ER40 collet chuck to the K&T rotary head mill. For those of you who are just joining us, maybe you want to go back and take a look at series, you know, parts one through three of this video. Um, the K&T rotary head mill has a unique collet system. It's a K&T 30 taper in the spindle, and uh, it's actually a double taper um, split type collet but it only goes up to three quarters of an inch. So going to an ER40 style call it, I can go up to actually an inch and an eighth. And you know, there's all kind of metric sizes available, I think all the way down to probably a 32nd of an inch on the low end. So a lot of versatility in this ad adaptation. So in this part, we're gonna do the retaining uh, plates or retaining washers for both the ER40 style call it chuck and for two um, Morse taper adapters. I originally got a Morse taper two uh, where I just put a, you know, made a uh, unsplit retaining plate. And then later I found on eBay a Morse taper three which had a slightly bigger body. So I just revised the drawing for that and I'm gonna make a slightly larger retainer plate that holds both those Morse tapers. So let's get over to the mill and get started. Turn our attention now to the retaining plates for the top of the collar nuts. I am going to attempt to make them out of these commercial McMaster washers. Unfortunately, um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hit my target dimensions. I mean, this has got a three and a half inch OD called out, and these are just under three and a half, actually, about 3.4. 90, but they're stamped, so they got a lot of uh, edge cleanup there that's required. And the thickness, they're about 372, so I'm going to have to take them until they clean up, including that, that stamped rolled edge there. But um, if, if they clean up well enough, uh, this is my cheapest option. Otherwise, I got to get some 3 8 plate. Uh, discs burned out of that or find some 3 8 plate I've got some and cut circles out of it which I'm trying to avoid so I'm going to try these first see how close I can get to these dimensions also going to use the um, fixture that I did for the axle adapters which is getting pretty peckered with holes but it is dead flat it's a nice surface to uh, clamp to and then when I start milling these you know they're going to be uh, they're going to be nice and flat and I'll be able to index them to the center holes here. So let's get over to the mill and get started. I'm zeroed on the stamped OD of this washer. Surprisingly, this thing only has a couple thousandths variation. So with this setup, I can mill the top down to that uh, center washer and also mill the OD. Just for grins, I'm going to see if I can get in there and see how concentric I got that center washer. And I eyeballed that within about 10 thousandths TIR. So uh, let's see how close I can get. So I don't want to run my handle into my vise. I'm good at doing that. Okay, we'll leave ourselves some clearance there and do the rest with the quill. And I think we're good. I'm going to slow the speed of the head down. We'll come down till we touch and we'll walk ourselves around dial in a little bit of resistance on the quill. And I'm going to come right on up till I touch that washer. Now I'm going to step out and get the OD, and I just want to get the OD until it cleans up. So until we're hitting the aluminum. Let's see how far under 
three and a half we are. 422. That's not too bad. So we're 3.422. After I finished up the first uh, face of this, I had to flip the piece over to do the other side. And I didn't take any steps here to keep my center you know, location known, so I had to re-zero everything. Did it a little bit differently on subsequent operations that I'll show you here in a minute, but it didn't take much extra time this on this one. This is the side that's going to take more cleanup with that rolled edge. I can hide maybe a little bit of it with a chamfer, but uh, let's see what we can do, how little we can mill off this and uh, maintain that thickness. actually better than I thought. Let's come down another five. That gets rid of enough of it. I can hide that little bit that remains with a chamfer. Okay, it's now a simple matter of duplicating the bolt pattern in the surface of this minus the ones that would lie on the split line because we're doing the uh, ER40 collet holder first. This drill's got a little bit of a wobble in it and it's a regrind. Let's see if I can drill a decent hole with it. Next operation is to hit these holes by coordinates and walk a circle around to make the counter bores. So I've maintained my set point of zero on the uh, center of the, of the uh, retainer plate. We're just going to step over. First one is 1.406 and a Y299. So the uh, counter bore for a quarter 20 socket head cap screw is a quarter inch deep and on the hollow chrome chart it's 0 .406 diameter. I'm going to tighten up that diameter because we're so close to the edge. So we'll go for the 0 .250 and then we will walk a very small orbit to increase the diameter. Let's try maybe 10 thousandths over the head diameter so that would be a 5 thousandths orbit go until we touch and then it's an additional 250. Let's check our concentricity. Looks good. So we're touching it about 30. So 100, 200, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I'm going to dial in a 5,000th orbit. And we'll walk a circle. <laughs> That's about how the heads fit on the uh, Monarch. There's just barely any, any room di diametrically for them. Which as long as your location for your clearance holes is good, then you're okay. So I'm going to leave the 5,000th orbit in place and we'll just step over to the next one. 100, 200, 50.
last operation before I switch over to toe clamps is uh, we'll do the chamfer on that top edge with this guy. So I'm going to bring it back to zero. I slowed the head down to one RPM, offset my cutter, and the offset distance isn't critical because my up and down will control how big this chamfer is. So let's just go till we touch and keep on closing in until we eliminate that factory stamped edge but we don't break into the counter boards. That looks good right there. It's probably a 30 or 40 thousandths chamfer. It's a climb cut but it's such a small climb cut that um, I don't think that it's going to introduce much chatter. I can go around one more time in the opposite direction. Just increase the depth of cut by a thousandths or so. One thousandths. Whisker cut. The clearance hole in the center of the retainer for the ER40 collet is 1 inch 390. So doing the math with the offset uh, and a half inch cutter, that's 0.445. I've offset 0 0.440 to leave me 10 thousandths cleanup. And I'm gonna uh, plunge down through this climb cut and, um, and then check where we're at and hone in on the 390. Not worried about the remnant there uh, of that unmachined area because this is going to get a hundred thousandths chamfer on this top side for back clearance for the taper on the ER40 collet shank. So let's see where we're at. I'm going to have to drop my knee. Looks like I'm at one inch 375, about 12,000 shy. One inch three seven, excuse me, one inch three eighty six. So another four thousand. This is just clearance, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to hit it. Another two thousandths on the radius. Last operation before I flip the part is a hundred thousandths by forty five chamfer on there. So switching cutters. 100 thousandths chamfer is getting close to what I can do in one pass. Um, so I'm going to get close to it. Basically, I come down until it touches and then dial in another 100 thousandths depth. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to conventional mill this. I've slowed the head down. And I think we're removing material now. It's not like liking cutting that close to the point. Come in a little bit more. This is about 70 thousandths. I'm going to do this in about three, three rings around it. doing this uh, last five thousandths pass as a cleanup cut. At this point I'm gonna have to flip the part over. So I'm gonna try to do something to preserve my position so that I've got less indicating. Um, I'm gonna clamp it in the center 
put my two uh, hold down dogs at 45 degrees and nest it against the side and then see if I can get that spot uh, directly. I'll show you what I mean. This should get me very close. Last operation is a 50 thousandths chamfer on this side. Actually one more operation then we do have to do our registration groove. I believe I'm touching. final feature on this part before I split it is the locating groove. Um, it is 55 thousandths deep. The OD is controlled to 2.5 to 2.502 and I show it as a quarter inch wide so basically if you had a quarter inch cutter you could make that. I don't. I found a 5 16 two flute end mill so my groove is going to be a little bit wider to the inside which is not a big deal but uh, I don't want to you know, just start cutting circles in the steel and creep up to the diameter. So I'm going to mill a groove in the aluminum plate itself, try to establish that OD exactly, and then just step back over to zero and put, put the groove in the part. So I am offset into space here, and I'll be able to mill a half circle into the uh, aluminum plate. Just measure that with calipers and adjust the OD until I'm at 2.502. So let's go about 10 thousandths deep. I'll come down until I touch. And I'm down actually 15 thousandths. Now we'll walk our circle. Our half circle. Now it should be several thousands undersize with what I've got here. I'm going to have to measure from the back. I'm at 2.485. I'm going to go a little bit deeper with the cutter. Looks like I'm at just over two and a half, so I am going to go back to the original center and keep this position. Go until I contact, then we'll dial in 55 thousandths. There's contact. There's 25. This is only a two flute mill, so I'm gonna go easy on it. pretty much right on target. So we're going to pull it off and do a test fit and then go to the final operation which is splitting the piece into two parts. Hmm. <laughs> 
no discernible play. And that's a good sign all the holes line up. The exact diameter of this is 3.423 and half of that is 1.712. So I've got the center line of the saw teeth on the edge of the part. I need to come down, need to come down to that point. I made sure I have enough depth to go clear, clear through the part and then uh, come down 1.712. I'm going to put my table on the slowest feed, which is a half an inch a minute. Hope that's slow enough. Okay. I'm going to watch for this part to rotate. There we have it. It's not a bad finish for a saw cut. If we didn't have that split dead on, we couldn't load these parts from the side. So that's what it's looking like. I'm going to deburr the bottom edge a bit and then we'll put the collet in it and see how everything clamps up. Now, unfortunately, this has to be put together as kind of a loose assembly because of the split, and then you have to load everything onto the spindle of the machine. I've run these counter bores absolutely as close as I could to the head of the screw, and there is some tolerance in the run out of a head of a socket head cap screw. So even if my hole is perfect, the screw may drag a little bit, a couple of these drag a little bit as I'm tightening them. But so far, every one of them has run down tight against the shoulder. This one's dragging a bit, so it's either the screw, a tiny bit out around, and this one drags. And I could try a different screw, where I can just apply a little bit more torque. Maybe on the next retaining nut, I'll go just a tiny bit bigger on the head counterbore diameter. It's amazing how tight you can make a quarter 28 screw. I could get a 3 8 torque wrench and it's it's really surprising how how tight you can get them we obviously don't need them that tight and you see the collet is still loose until it's loaded up onto the spindle okay over to the machine Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there's just a little bit of thread left where uh, this is locked up and I still have room for more travel up here. The solid retainers are pretty straightforward. It's just the six uh, bolt hole pattern and uh, clearance hole on the ID. Now, since I originally designed this, I did find um, an NMBT 30 to Morse Taper 3 adapter so this nose is a little bit bigger so what i did was i enlarged the center bore it was uh, 1.27 now it's 1.588 and that will hold the morse taper 3 and it'll hold the morse taper 2 in place so it'll do uh, dual purpose so i got two of these set up on the mill found the centers of both and uh, mill the od face them flip them over mill the back side and then put in the um, bolt pattern and that center hole. It's
real easy to do uh, six uh, bolt pattern, you know, six hole bolt pattern, 60 degrees. Just got to zero my dial here. It's three degrees per rotation. Socket head cap screw quarter 28, making it a little tighter than standard at 390. The tool was 375, the difference in diameter is 15 thousandths. It's a radial offset of 7.5 thousandths, so it's a very small orbit, uh, quarter inch deep. for the retaining washers is 1.588 inches using a half inch diameter um, end mill. Difference is 1.088, half of that, the offset, 0.544. So here's the finished product with the ER40 collet chuck in place and the uh, you can see that the retainer cap is split for this. Uh, the nice part about this is once you loosen this a few turns it will bear on the um, conical body of the collet chuck and it'll pop the taper free. The standard K&T collets really get stuck in here. Uh, like I said, I wish I had a draw rod, but clamping on the flange of the um, the collet chuck is the only other option. That's what it looks like from the inside. Well, I hope you enjoyed that series on doing the uh, collet adapters. It took a lot of... Uh, video footage to get all that machining um, documented to you, but uh, hey, it's it's done and passed us. We can get some other projects going now. I think first and foremost, I got to get that ACK return lathe running. So I'm currently working on the replacement motor uh, pivot bracket, which uh, was originally a cast iron part and it broke in the, in the wreck where the lathe dumped out of the truck bed. That's another video you got to check out. So uh, next time, maybe we'll be bringing you the fabrication of that bracket and getting that lathe up and running. So thanks for all the new subscribers. Check out our content on Instagram at Engineers Workshop 1964. And uh, I'll post updates and what's coming in the videos on that, uh, on that Instagram platform. So thanks again for all the new subscribers. I really appreciate it. And until then, as always, stay safe.